high school, I was excited to learn about all these new electives being offered. I love so many subjects, so it was hard to narrow down which ones to take, but eventually, when I was finally done picking my classes, I compared my schedule with my friends, just to see if they had any classes with me. Then one of my friends said, yeah, I love English, but I didn't take English literature this year because I suck at it. And I asked her, well, why do you suck at English? And she replied, well, I only got a 70 in the class last year. And at first I thought, fair enough. But then later I realized, whether you suck at a subject or not, shouldn't the point of school be about fostering our interest and becoming better at something? So why does getting a bad mark limit our learning? Unfortunately, the reality for many students is they don't take certain classes for fear it would bring down their academic average. And this is a big deal when students compromise their own learning just to get certain numbers on their report cards. Now you might be thinking, well, that's the student's own fault anyways, but why do so many of them care about grades rather than learning? Could it be that school is focusing on the wrong thing? It seems like school's sole preoccupation is to determine who can follow the curriculum the best. We as young people are taught to memorize information found in a textbook, only to regurgitate it onto next week's test paper before forgetting all about it. Oh, you don't need to know that for the test or that's way beyond the curriculum, are usually some teacher's responses to an insightful question or an original comment that a student has made. I feel like school no longer inspires the minds of the next generation. Instead, researchers at the College of William & Mary show that the creativity among students is on the decline and an increased number of students merely learn the minimum just to get the desired grade. We ask, hey, what's on the quiz? So we can study just that. And if something is not for marks or not on a test, then we're reluctant to do the work assigned. Now, is this because students are lazy? Why do we seem so mark obsessed? Well, it's because a number means so much to us nowadays, because we feel like those numbers determine our futures. So we value getting a good mark as more important than learning itself. But what other choices do we have? It's not like we really have a say in this. We are told day after day that education is the key to a successful life and that we need good marks in order to have a respectable job or a good income. Sure, some people tell us that marks don't define us and that we're more than just a grade, but it never feels that way. Many institutions and learning programs solely look at the marks on a transcript, making students feel like their future is determined by that simple piece of paper. So even though some students might be passionate about their learning or have an inventive mind, if they underperform on those exams, then these organizations will refuse to consider them. Innovation will stagnate if this current ideology of education is followed because we kill our children's creativity, curiosity, and desire to learn. The education system makes it easy for them to just do what they're being told. By high school, most of us students, we will stop asking questions and we will roll our eyes at the few who do. And in the midst of all of this, we have developed another problem. We somehow adopted this false perspective that those who have good marks must be better and smarter than those who do not. Now, those that have trouble following one way of learning have to face a stigma, because in our society, students with lower grades are considered as less intelligent. And this lowers the self-esteem, but oftentimes it just means they might learn differently. And they are smart in their own way. 
or they could be going through a personal issue that consequently affects their marks, we shouldn't be so quick to judge them. Personally, I have always been a straight-A student throughout high school. Most of my marks are in the mid to high 90s. And when I tell people that I have almost failed grade two and three, and only got C's in elementary school, no one believes me. They say, well, you seem smart, so how could you have possibly struggled in elementary school? Well, the truth is, I almost failed those couple of grades because those were the years when I first immigrated to Canada. And at that time, I didn't know English or French. I was faced with a lot of language and social barriers. I had horrible grades, not necessarily because I wasn't intelligent or I was just lazy at school, no. I honestly couldn't understand the words that my teachers were even saying, let alone understanding the homework. I couldn't communicate with my classmates because of this language barrier. And from being faced with racial stereotypes on a daily basis to being very insecure due to my ethnicity, my accent at that time, or even like the food that I brought from home because it smelled different. No wonder I had difficulty learning in school. I was so concerned about fitting in as a minority. <coughs> Thankfully, I eventually overcame the problems that came with immigration, but to this day, nothing frustrates me more than when students with higher grades think that they're better than others simply because they have better marks, or when teachers dare to view some of their students as less capable just because of their performance at school. Sure, some people might not be naturally talented in subjects such as algebra, but does that honestly mean that they're less smart? And why can't we also see that mental illnesses, bullying, financial insecurity, family issues, and other factors do limit some people's ability to do well at school? Now, does that mean that they don't have the potential to succeed? Of course not. So numbers don't tell you everything. And the problem with our current education system right now is that we have a one-size-fits-all kind of deal, but we know that students have different needs, strengths, passions. No two brains are the same. And just like Richard Williams said, if a doctor was to prescribe the same exact medicine to all of his students, then it would be a disaster, right? Because so many of their patients would get sick. Yet, when it comes to school, this is exactly what happens. We have one system, and we just expect everybody to follow it. Now, I'm not saying that grading is useless, and it's all the teacher's fault, because teachers are actually stuck in the same system that was imposed on them, just like it was on the students. And we can't just blame the policymakers of education either because it's not like there's an obvious way to do this. We can't just overturn the current system completely and say, oh, let's just abolish the grading system and consider every student individually because that's just not realistic, or at least not yet. However, until we do improve the way we educate our future generation, there is something you can do to help reinstill students' desires to go to school, and that is to change our perspective on what grades really mean and to realize that the numbers do not define their intelligence or potential. Looking back on history, we can easily find people who, despite not being at the top of their class, they had brilliant minds. Think of Sir Isaac Newton, who received horrible grades in high school. Think of Albert Einstein, who also received mediocre grades. Similarly, Thomas Edison was called mentally ill by his teachers, but he is now known as the person who lights up our lives, literally. So if we want to realize the potential of our society, we need to shift the focus away from academic performance alone. Instead, encouraging the desire to learn should be school's focus, not just the grades that we receive. It shouldn't be about the comparative achievement, but rather the long-term progress of our students. So instead of relying on grades to measure someone's success potential or intellect, 
We should just use them as feedback on their learning. And we need to stop treating those that have lower grades as inferior. And when we can stop marginalizing students with lower grades, and when we can stop forcing students to believe that their grades is the only indicator of success, that's when we will better and truly encourage the leaders of tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you.